Welcome to another movie plot and enjoy the memories. It starts with a fake trailer for the real movie called Machete. He's a hired assassin who with the help of his priest friend takes an expensive job but is set up. After two minutes of straight carnage that's pretty much a revenge movie in itself, the trailer ends and we transition into the main feature. A go-go dancer named Cherry spends the first minute of the film performing on stage while the opening credits appear around her. She ends it by crying on stage and afterwards tells her slimeball boss Skip that she wants to make a change in her life and quits her job. While walking home Cherry startled by several military trucks passing on their way to a nearby base. Having fallen into a bunch of trash cans, she rises with a small gash on her thigh as a sign of bigger things to come. When the convoy reaches the military base the scientist in charge Abby discovers that three of his experiments are missing. For Romy's failure, Abby has his henchman hold his lieutenant down and castrate him, before adding his giblets to his collection which he keeps nearby in a jar for some reason. After finishing the eunuch off, another team shows up led by Lieutenant Muldoon looking to rob them. It begins a violent gunfight in which Abby's men are all shot to death and he's held down to be interrogated. As strange boils start to form on the lieutenant's face Abby's able to shoot a gas canister releasing a mysterious chemical into the air. It's what Muldoon and his men have come searching for and they all begin basking in it, while allowing Abby to escape in a vehicle with another man on the roof trying to get inside. The camera then pans off to someone pulling up at a rundown barbecue hut. Tammy's car is overheating but she turns down the owner JT's offer for a warm meal and passes Cherry who limps by into the restaurant. The frazzled woman leaves when the place's second customer of the entire day pulls in. Local mechanic L Ray's a regular around these parts and hears from JT that it's a special night as it's the restaurant's 25th anniversary, hence the balloons. Ray sits with the upset Cherry who's currently wearing his jacket as they have a long history together. Despite always arguing the two clearly still have feelings for each other and Cherry asks to get a lift with him when he leaves. Nearby a struggling married couple wake up for their night shift at the hospital. Bill's onto his wife's hidden affair as Dakota begins texting her secret lover while making breakfast for the family. When they get to work Bill inspects a bite in patient Joe's arm that begins bubbling like Muldoon's troops. His tongue's got the same infection and bursts onto the doctor's glasses, while Dr. Felix compares it to the gruesome mustard gas injuries sustained by soldiers in Iraq. For a second opinion Bill decides to call in his wife Dr. Dakota who wields her syringes like weapons. She injects Joe with three in succession making him pass out so that one of the surgeons can amputate. Two miles from the military base we see that Tammy's broken down again and her phone has died. Hearing strange noises in the distance she walks the opposite way while attempting to flag down drivers, but none of them pull over so she's attacked by a group of infected and torn apart. Ray and Cherry drive past and just assume they're people dragging away roadkill, when suddenly one steps out in front of them and L Ray's forced to swerve putting the truck on its roof. Cherry's then snatched up by one of the infected and dragged off into the woods, leaving L Ray to grab his rifle and go after them. He catches up and puts a bullet in the back of one of the infected but it doesn't die and runs away with Cherry's leg, leaving her barely alive to be taken to the hospital. While trying to explain to Bill what happened Sheriff Haig arrives with his deputies and pulls Ray away for questioning. He says that the mechanic's past arrest record means that he's not allowed to carry a rifle even for hunting, and when noticing all of the sickly looking patients Haig decides to take the questions down to the station. While there the sheriff questions him about Cherry's missing leg but Ray starts reminiscing with his old friend McGraw, a Texas ranger whose wife's currently dying of cancer so he goes home to take care of her. Meanwhile JT notices two people standing outside of the shack but they refuse to answer his questions as they're already infected. So walking away impressed at his own cooking, the chef calls up his brother the sheriff to complain about the pair of loiterers. Haig ignores his brother's problems and demands to know his secret sauce recipe, but JT promises to take it to the grave as he hangs up just as the infected decide to make their move on the building. Arriving back at the station missing a finger is Deputy Tolo, who says that the maniac who bit it off is locked up in his cruiser outside. Deputy Carlos leads the officers out front where they see that the infected man escaped the back seat and Tolo's fingers missing. Carlos finds Tolo's wedding ring and goes to hand it to his partner when a swarm of infected attack them and tear the rookie apart. Haig shoots as many as he can of the surrounding swarm while Tolo's tossed into a cruiser at high velocity, but still manages to recover his ring. More officers show up to assist while Ray saves Haig by shooting through his cuffs and his infected attacker with a single shot. Since Haig's patrol car explodes the two take Ray's truck to the hospital with the remaining cops firing from the back. Inside we see that Tammy's among the dead victims brought in and has had her brain removed. Dakota's heartbroken and already having some suspicions, Bill takes both their phones to discover that it was Tammy his wife was having the affair with. The twisted man uses one of Dakota's needles to stab her hands paralyzing them, then when he's about to kill her with a lethal dose of the third needle another doctor calls him away. 
all of the recently received dead bodies have disappeared from the morgue with a trail of blood leaving the scene. As self-preservation Felix suggests the doctors abandon the hospital, so Bill goes to get his wife who he locked inside a closet earlier until he could deal with her. He instead comes across Joe who's now fully infected and has killed his surgeon after losing the arm. Unable to reach the terrified Bill with a bone saw, Joe instead rubs his own infected blood all over the doctor's face to convert him. Dakota manages to escape by leaping out of the hospital window into a pile of trash below. Trying to use her paralyzed hand to access her car, she loses her balance and snaps her wrist on the fall. In excruciating pain she finally gets inside her car and Dakota uses her watch to change gears, leaving and driving past El Rey's truck as the group arrive. But the ex-con isn't allowed guns by Haig so he takes two butterfly knives and heads inside looking for Cherry, killing many of the attacking infected on the way in an impressive acrobatic showing. The dancer wakes up in a hospital room and notices her legs missing before becoming depressed. By the time El Rey finds her Cherry wants to be left alone to die so he gives her a pep talk and a new peg leg. She's forced to find her footing as they rush through the halls fighting off attackers, while in Tolo's terror he accidentally shoots a random patient and gets called an idiot by a sheriff. The couple make it back to his truck but almost lose Cherry when Ray takes off a bit too soon. With her complaining the whole way about splinters, the group returns to JT's restaurant where the sheriff hands out weapons and deputizes all but the team's most capable fighter. Their small squad make their way up the hill and enter to find JT dead behind the counter, but he's just playing possum with some barbecued sausages on his stomach as a disguise. He blew the heads off the two attackers and discovered the ultimate sauce recipe when blood from his forehead mixed in with the latest batch. The disheveled Dakota eventually gets home to her two crazy babysitter twins demanding to know why she's so late. Dakota throws them out and tells her son Tony that they have to leave so he collects all of his obscure pets. They hop in the car when the twins return and begin trashing it with shovels, so Dakota speeds off leaving one of them to take a hard fall and drives to her father's house. Inside her father McGraw feeds Dakota's mother some soup and looks away for a second, when she suddenly becomes one of the infected and attacks him. He doesn't answer to his daughter beeping the horn, so not wanting to remove him from the safety of the vehicle Dakota tells Tony to take a pistol from the glove box and shoot anyone that approaches the car, even if it's dad. She warns her son to be careful or he'll shoot his own face off, then as Dakota approaches the house she hears a gunshot as Tony just accidentally killed himself. Before she can mourn Bill shows up and says that he's going to eat his wife's brain but she pushes free and collects her dead son. With a large crowd of infected surrounding her Dakota runs up to the front door and begins banging on it, as McGraw's revealed to have survived his wife's attack in gory fashion. The barbecue survivors are introduced to JT's custom chopper and 50s convertible as their vehicles for escape. Haig continues to ask Ray about his past but he continues to evade the question. He discusses with Cherry their falling out and we learn that Cherry left Ray because he couldn't commit to them. Ray has her check the pocket of his jacket that she's carried around with her for a long time and finds an engagement ring that he was planning on giving her, leading them to horizontally reconcile with a peg leg in the air. A missing reel causes the film to stop and melt away before we resume the movie 20 minutes later, where the infected have destroyed JT's place and the rest of the survivors have joined them. Haig's bleeding out after being shot in the neck by the useless Tolo and gives El Rey his weapon. We miss the important dialogue when Ray revealed who he really was, and the now servient sheriff tells everyone to give the expert killer more weapons. Ray's now the leader of the group and since Skip's too afraid to do it, Cherry attempts to make it to the truck while he covers her with a rifle claiming that he never misses. He clearly doesn't and she makes it inside the truck and drives it straight into the side of the restaurant to collect the ones who don't fit in JT's vehicles. Earl wants to stay behind to provide cover for his daughter and the rest of the group escape the diner and make it to Dakota's car. Except for Tolo who's brutally pulled apart like he's a bloomin' onion. Dakota jumps on the back of the chopper with Cherry while Ray takes out Tony's pocket bike and leads the charge from below. As a bit of randomness JT's dog jumps out of the truck and is crushed spraying the horrid twins in his blood. The group eventually reach the bridge on the edge of town but they're blocked by a wall of infected, when they're suddenly shot down by Muldoon and his men. El Rey's revealed to be a war veteran and is taken alongside the rest of the group back to the military base. They've recaptured Abby who explains that this is all caused by a chemical weapon and that the only cure is the virus itself, inhaled into the lungs at a consistent rate. Two of the soldiers come to collect Cherry and Dakota to take them on an elevator. When Cherry gets cheeky one of the soldiers removes his mask to threaten her but his face begins to change, until told by his partner to return the mask and his boils subside. For some reason the guards watch the prisoners from inside the cell so they're easily overpowered by them all at once, but JT shot in the stomach and left mortally wounded with the injured Haig. They're recaptured but Ray does a slick hand over headshot and goes with Abby to take out Muldoon's entire team, and hand the lieutenant their balls in a bag as Abby likes to do these things. 
The soldier then goes on to explain that his team was the one who killed Osama bin Laden but it was against America's interest, so the government had him and his men induced with the harmful virus to silence them. They've been using it ever since to stay alive while releasing it on the town to experiment on the infected in hopes of finding a cure. While he's talking without his mask Muldoon completely turns, leaving the pair to thank him for his service and shoot him dead. The soldiers that took the girls demand Cherry to dance on her wooden leg so she spins around and clobbers him with it, then stabs him in the eye and breaks it off. He still survives and the creep drops his pants to have his way with her but his junk begins to disintegrate from having no mask. Dakota finally gets some feeling back in her working hand and shoots a needle into the soldier's other eye and one into his friend. When Abby and Ray enter and kill the second soldier before sticking an assault rifle on Cherry's stump and allowing her to test the grenade launcher on her infected attacker. She then shoots all the men in the command center while El Ray leaves a bomb with the two dying brothers to go out with a bang. He has Cherry sit on the bike the opposite way and rides out into the courtyard allowing her to mow down anyone trying to stop them. Their plans to make it to a helicopter but while approaching Abby has his head blown off in lackluster fashion. JT finally reveals his recipe to Haig as the younger brother dies, then before he bleeds out blows up the military base and the secret to the best barbecue in Texas. Cherry uses her grenade launcher to surprise attack the soldiers guarding the chopper from the sky, and uses her go-go dancer experience to eliminate the rest. She was told by Dakota that everyone's talents come in handy even if it's just their flexibility, which comes into play now as she slips a rocket and returns fire. The rest of the survivors fight their way to the helicopter and make it on board but El Rey saves Cherry from an infected soldier and the two trade back and forth. Somehow Dakota's confronted by Bill after all this time but he's instantly shot down by a returning McGraw, having survived his last stand and never liked his daughter's husband. Skip flies the helicopter through the remaining infected horde to Cherry who's comforting a dying El Rey. He repeats the words that he never misses implying that Ray got Cherry pregnant during their night at JT's, then bleeds out as Cherry's picked up by the helicopter and flown away. Sometime later the new team leaders taking a large group of survivors to a temple in a remote part of Mexico. She carries El Rey's child on her back and now has a minigun attached to her leg for a better rate of fire, as Tony's shown still alive and playing with his pets with the survivors beginning their new lives. And the movie ends.